So you have out a pencil, highlighter, and a calculator. Um, we're going to talk about similarity statements, finding corresponding links and similar polygons. No. Um, in your flipped classroom, you're going to learn about perimeters and areas of similar polygons. And then we're going to talk about whether polygons are similar in general. This is not necessarily the order we're going in. Um, but let's first talk about this. Uh, you have a blank at the top says similar polygons or similar figures. I don't remember. Similar figures. You're going to write this in. They have the same shape and proportional size. They have the same shape and they are proportional in size. So same shape, proportional size. size. So same shape, proportional size. You see these all the time with like miniatures. Um, you've got this car. It is a Ferrari. Um, and then you got a little mini one. They are similar to each other, um, but one is just sized down and one is, you know, bigger. Same thing with these triangles. They all are the same triangle. They're just smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the same thing with squares. What you need to know um, is this is the symbol for similar figures. So I would draw the squiggle. Um, it means similar figure. Okay, so keep in mind, um, you remember with congruent figures, with congruent figures it had the congruent symbol. This is a similar symbol. We'll talk about it today, but this is called a similarity statement. You already have this on your paper. Um, this was called a congruent statement. So let's talk about this. You're going to highlight the similar symbol and also just the word similar. This is how I know these two triangles are similar to each other. And we're going to talk about what that means. Similar figures are two things. Okay? Their corresponding angles are congruent. That's the first thing you write into the box. So you're writing that in the middle-ish of the page and that box. The corresponding angles are congruent which we can see in this picture, M is congruent to Q, L is congruent to P, N is congruent to R, okay? But the sides, the corresponding sides are proportional, which is what you're going to write in. The corresponding sides are proportional. Corresponding sides are proportional. So what does proportional mean to me? I'll show you. Proportional means that all of these sides were multiplied by the same number to get these side lengths. So let's take that to the test. What side corresponds with 3 on the other figure? Yeah, PQ, which is 6. 3 times what is 6? 2. two. Okay. Um, what about 4? What does 4 correspond with on the other figure? 8. 4 times 2 is 8. And the same thing with 5. 5 times 2 is, you know. They all were multiplied by the same number. That's what makes them proportional. So in this lesson, you're going to learn what we call this number, since we multiplied each of the sides by 2. We call that a scale factor, and we'll talk about it in a second. Okay? Um, but this is similar figures, or similar polygons. Okay? Congruent angles, proportional sides. Whereas congruent polygons, like to the right, um, the corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding sides are congruent. So you write that into your box. Corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding sides are congruent. Yeah. So the angles are the same idea, but the sides are where they differ. In a congruent polygon, the corresponding sides are congruent. But in a similar polygon, corresponding sides are proportional. Okay, and you can see the angles are congruent. What is C congruent with? F and A and D and B and E. Okay, and then the sides you can see as well. What does AC correspond with? FD. Okay, and they're congruent. Same thing with AB and E, whatever that is, D, and so on and so forth. Okay, so later you're going to be asked, are the two figures 
similar. In order for them to be similar, you can fill this in, congruent, uh, the corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding sides are proportional. There's a blank at the bottom and you're going to highlight all of it. So in order for figures to be similar, the corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding sides are proportional. And whenever you're ready, we're going to flip. We're going to talk about another. If you see a key item, I would just start highlighting because this is important. Like here, important. Scale factor. Go ahead and highlight it. I'm going to tell you what it is. So a scale factor is the number that is multiplied to all sides of a figure of a similar figure. So it is a number that is multiplied to all the sides of a similar figure. So, on the page before, what did we multiply to all the sides of the triangle to get the new triangle? We multiply times two. So two is the scale factor. Okay, so sometimes it's really easy to see and sometimes not so much. Um, what you need to know and fill in, um, if you're going from a bigger figure to a smaller figure, your scale factor needs to be less than one. So if you're going from a bigger figure to a smaller figure, your scale factor needs to be less than one. You're writing that down, y'all. All right, which we talk about. Here is, some people try to do a shortcut, and your shortcut, if it's not working and you're getting it wrong, then stop doing your shortcut. I'm going to show you why the scale factor is what it is. Six times the scale factor. Looking at this, we don't know what the scale factor is right off the bat. So I'm going to call it X. Okay, so go ahead and write X. It stands for the scale factor. Six times the scale factor gives me what length on the other triangle? Four. So to solve for the scale factor, you're going to have to divide by six. Okay? Four divided by six, we can reduce. You will want to leave it as a fraction. You don't want it as a decimal because um, we like fractions. Very easy to simplify. What is four over six reduced to? Two thirds. So that is our scale factor. Here's what you just found. Six times two thirds gives me four. And I'll show you. Six times two is? 12. One times three is three. And they reduce to four. Okay, here's what a lot of students have been doing. To go from a bigger figure to a smaller figure, this number has to be less than one to make the number smaller. If it weren't, a lot of people are using the flipped version because they're like, oh, I'm just going to do 6 over 4, and that reduces to 3 over 2. Here's why it's wrong. If I multiplied 6 times 3 over 2, my number is not going to get smaller. What is 6 times 3? 18, and 1 times 2 is 2, and that would mean this length would have to be 9, and it is not. So if you're going from a bigger figure to a smaller figure, it's got to be less than 1. Over here, if you're going from a smaller polygon to a bigger polygon, it's got to be greater than 1. So that is what you're filling in, greater than 1. All right, so what is the scale factor of this one? It's pretty easy to see. Two. Yeah, 3 times 2 is 6, and 4 times 2 is 8. So the scale factor here would be 2. If you did it, you know, the way I've been showing you, 3 times the scale factor of x equals 6 divided by 3, and you get 2. Um, sometimes the scale factor, even though it's greater than 1, sometimes it'll still be a fraction, because remember that fractions um, can still be larger than 1. So, like, 3 fourths, is that bigger than 1? No. Um, but is 4 thirds bigger than 1? It is. It's improper, but we like that. That's okay. Um, so, bigger than one, sometimes the, it'll still be a fraction like that. Okay? The next thing we talk about is a statement of proportionality. Go ahead and highlight it. A 
a statement of proportionality. So we're going to write a statement of proportionality. We're going to show that all the sides are proportional, like we keep saying they are. So here is what we do. We're going to pick a side off of this first figure. Did you say AB? Yeah, sounds good. We're going to use the letters. So AB, what does AB correspond with on the second figure? WX. Okay, we're going to set it equal to another set of sides. We're going to set it equal to all the sets of sides because they're all proportional like this. So what does AB correspond, or sorry, what is another side from this first figure? AD, sounds good. AD. What does AD correspond with in the second figure? WZ. All right, um, so again, if you notice, AB and AD came from the same figure. It has to be this way. We've got to keep coming back to this figure to put um, a side in the top. So what side are we going to use now? Um, BC. BC, sounds good. BC, which corresponds with XY. And then the last one, DC, good, and it would be CY, good. So go ahead and highlight around this. This is a statement of proportionality. It is not a similarity statement. So on the worksheet I'm going to give you, you're going to be asked to make a statement of proportionality. It is not the same thing as a similarity statement. Just for your future reference, because you'll see it on the um, flipped classroom, this is a similarity statement. I talk about it on the flip classroom, but my honors got ahead in the 8.1 practice I give you, and they didn't know what a similarity statement was. This is a similarity statement. This is a statement of proportionality. So if it asks for a similarity statement, it's going to look like that. Okay. Um, so why would we do this? This sounds like a lot of work. Here's why we do this. Let's say we wanted to find a side. Pick a side that is missing that we don't know. X, Y. X, Y. We know X, Y. Oh, yeah, M, sure. So we know that X, Y, what does X, Y correspond with on the other figure? B, C. B, C. What we can do is set it equal to two other side lengths that we do know and solve for what's missing. So X, Y, I'm going to use Y, Z. YZ and DC. I'll tell you why in a second. Um, so what you can do is set two pairs, I guess four pairs, of sides equal. What is the length of XY? Is M, we don't know. And what is the length of BC? 12. And we can set it equal to, what's the length of YZ? 15. And the length of DC? 10. So we can set up a proportion like this and then just solve, which we all know how to do. My first class was not confident in this. How do we solve a proportion? You can do that. Or we can cross multiply. We don't have a scientific calculator, so unless you're like super confident. She's saying multiply by 12, which is fine. You would just want to put it over 1 and then you'd reduce and all that. Or um, just what I've been doing is cross multiply. So you could do... 10m and then 12 times 15 is this 180 180 divide by 10 and m equals 18 so we would know the length of m is 18 Okay, that's why we're doing what we're doing. That's why you set up a statement of proportionality, just for a baby step to show you how to set up an equation. Okay? So again, your statement of proportionality is not the numbers. Your statement of proportionality is what you highlighted at the beginning. Okay? I'm just showing you why we do what we do. Okay? So we're going to use the scale factor and the statement of proportionality and answer this question. In the diagram, triangle JKL, 
What does that symbol mean again? Um, it's similar to triangle PQR. Find the scale factor from triangle JKL to PQR. Let's start there. So we are going from JKL to PQR. Let's find the scale factor. Because this is, these two triangles are similar, um, the scale factor is going to be the same no matter which sides we pick. Okay, so let's just start somewhere and pick two sides. KL and what? QR. And QR. So we need to figure out 4 times the scale factor gives me a length of 6. Okay, divide by 4. So the scale factor, go ahead and reduce, is 3 over 2. Boom. Then list all the pairs of congruent angles. So you remember how we used to be able to just look at this statement and just list off of that? We could still do it. So you can look at the figure if you want, or you can just look at this list. Um, I look at the list. Um, triangle J is going to be congruent to triangle, oh, sorry, angle J is congruent to angle. Yeah, P. Angle K is congruent to angle Q. Angle L is congruent to angle R. Ta-da! The last, write the ratios. What does a ratio look like? Yeah, fraction. Write the ratios of the corresponding side lengths in a statement of proportionality. So this is when we take all the side lengths which there are three, because there's it's triangle, and we're going to set them equal like this. So I already have KL and QR highlighted, so we're just going to go with that first. KL corresponds with QR. We could do JL. What does JL correspond with? PR, good. And then last... JK corresponds with, well, we'd say PQ. It's J, then K, E, then Q. That's it. This is a statement of proportionality. You are going to practice on the next page. It's an example just like this. All right, what did we get for scale factor? Three-fifths. Good. Um, and then congruent angles. Angle R is congruent to angle X. Angle S is congruent to angle Y. Angle T is congruent to angle Z. I'm going to walk around and check your statement of proportionality since you all could have very different answers. Um, so we're going to do this last example, and then I'll hand you the practice worksheet. So...
we're going to solve for a missing side. Come on, there we go. Um, so we want to find the value of x. We know these figures are similar because, you know, that's what they told us in the directions. What do we know about similar figures and their sides? They are all multiplied by the same scale. Yes, which means they're proportional. You're correct. So they are proportional. We're going to set up a proportion. So you can do a couple different things. But either way, we need to find x. What does x correspond with on the other triangle? 30. We're going to set it equal to two other sides. So since x is in the numerator, we need to choose from the same triangle as x. Do we want to pick 15 or 20? There's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. Sounds good. We can use 15. What does 15 correspond with on the second triangle? 18. All right, and then we are going to cross-multiply. 30 times 15 is 450 equals 18x. Divide by 18, and x equals 25. You would have gotten that even if we had done the other way, x over 30, if we had set it equal to 20 over 24, you would have also gotten x equals 25. As long as the top row is from the same triangle, the bottom row is from the same triangle, and then the top and the bottom correspond. Go for it. Could you find the scale factor and then multiply 30 by Correct. The factor? Yes. Yep. What? Okay, I'm going to hand you this. You what? I think I'm the scale factor. I don't see the same thing. Yeah. Um, we're going to look at this worksheet. Um, we're going to look at the back. So before we start it, go ahead and look at the back. This is homework as well. No. No, but we have uh, 23 minutes left in class. Today is the 11th, yes. Okay, so let's look at number six. We're actually going to do it together because you haven't had one like this and. I'll prepare you. So all looking at number six, we want to find, or sorry, the polygons are similar. Find the values of X and Y. So if they're similar, their side lengths are proportional. So we're going to set up a proportion. Do we want to find X or Y? Sounds good. We're going to find X. So we're going to set up a proportion with X minus six. What does X minus six correspond with? 39, correct. And we're going to set it equal to a second pair of sides. Um, we don't want to use y right now because then we'd have x and y in an equation, and that would be a mess. So we're going to use 18. What does 18 correspond with? 24. So this is where I, I people make mistakes. 39 times 18 is? Is it 702? Okay, so the mistake that people make is that they say, oh, it's 24x minus 6. This is supposed to be 24 times x minus 6, but what got multiplied if I only write it like this? Just the x. So what do we use to show that I want to multiply 24 by x and 6? Parentheses, so that I can distribute. Good. So some people, right off the bat, they just put parentheses like when they saw the picture. That is fine also. Want to make sure you're going to distribute. 702 equals 24x. What is 24 times negative 6? Negative 144. Add 144. Eight forty six. Good. And then divide by twenty four. It is a decimal and it is okay. Mm -hmm. Thirty five point twenty five. Thirty five point twenty five. 
35.25. Done. Yes, ma'am. So, like, I kind of, like, skipped the parentheses part, and I just kind of wrote that. Like, I just already knew that it was That's fine. As long as you know to distribute in your head. We're going to do the same thing for y. What does y correspond with? 27. And then, again, you don't want to have two variables, so I would use 18 and 24 again. Cross multiply. 24y. What is 27 times 18? 486. Divide by 24. What is it? 20.25. Good. Okay. Um, you're going to work on this. Uh, just make sure on 4 and 5, they don't have letters and they should. So 4 and 5, you want to look at the front and go ahead and write in A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H for both of them. I put it on the screen for you to look at.